train and the carriages. And he lived in a very small village. When the train line passed from there, when the train passed, he says, we young boys were so very much overwhelmed to see a train goes, run by the steam. There is no carriage. I mean, there is no horse or bullock cart. There is something which goes automatically. So we all of us used to run from the field, come near the station and see the train and admire it. As long as it stood at the station. The moment it started moving, we took stones in our hands and threw at it. When it started moving, then of course we lifted some stones and threw at the moving train. As long as it stood, we admired it. The moment it started, and this happens in many, many villages, you find when the train starts moving, then somebody, a small child, picks up a stone and throws at it. This is exactly the situation when a society moves or when a leader is on the move and is not prepared to accept any state of inertia, then that leader must be stoned, sometimes to death. Now, there is a society which is inert, which likes to remain where it is. When in Birmingham they allowed the Muslims to have their adhan on microphone and loudspeakers, the Muslims rejoiced, said, here we have for the first time won our battle against the British Empire. They did not know that they have won no battle whatsoever. Because for British people to encounter Muslim influence was not a new experience. They had done it in India. There is a paper in India in which they have written in their own memorandum that when the Muslims ask for Adhan to be pronounced loudly, allow them. But before allowing them, first stop them. Let the steam build within them. When the Shias want to come out on Ashura procession, first tell them don't come out. There is risk, security risk. Let them have that steam built up within them. Then, in order to show them that you are defeated, say, all right, you are allowed. They will feel inflated and say, oh, here we are, we have won. And in that memorandum, they write that these ceremonials are important to Muslims so that they can be lulled to sleep. If they ask, if they rise for their rights, if they rise so that they can move, then don't allow. But if they ask for these things, small things, allow them. So when we want to build a mosque, inshallah, here we'll be told, no, no, no. For one year, two years, we'll be told, no, 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 you can't build a mosque. And then finally we'll be told, yes, now we have considered your application sympathetically, and you are allowed. And that day we shall all rejoice that we have won the battle, we have won nothing. They knew how to deal with us psychologically. The moment you stand up to show that there is a movement now, the society is vibrant and alive, then you will know what are the prospects of winning a battle. So, it is the movement which is important to show that we are alive. And that movement, remember my word, was actually kept alive and vibrant by the ghaybah of Imam Zaman Ajjal Allahu Faraja. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined that there will be 11 hujjah, one after the other, after the death of the Prophet. The 12th one will go into concealment and the actual reason for concealment knows no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, it kept the Shia Islamic community alive and vibrant and vigorous. Now, when the Orientalists found out that this is the truth, they tried to interpret it differently. Now, remember, this is the trap. They started telling people that since the Shias were oppressed people, all over the centuries and they never never obeyed the rules of Umayyads and Abbasids and others 
they always talked about the rule of God on earth and they always attacked, opposed and they themselves were suppressed and oppressed. Therefore, psychologically, they were expecting a savior dreaming. They were daydreaming. The a savior will one day come to rescue us, to help us. That rescue, that rescuer, that savior would be their Mahdi. This is what they are writing. We say exactly the same thing. There's only one difference. We say we do expect him to come. He is definitely there, he will come. But not because we are oppressed, but because we are on the move. We are on the move. I'll give you three or four examples because I thought that my silence on many matters have been misconstrued. And there comes a limit to the hypocrisy displayed by people when they come to me and tell me something else and when they go back they speak something else. And I have not given my life for this community to be subjected to that hypocrisy and munafiqiyat. It has got to be clean. Say what you believe in and that's over. We will part our ways forever. But don't try to cheat people and deceive. And this is the reason why I thought that there is a limit to what I can, I can really sustain. Therefore, I would like to say something. When a leader decides that the community would move, what does he do? He tries to break the age-old traditions which are irreligious. He tries to tell the community how much we have borrowed from Hinduism and it does not belong to Islam. And it also tries to tell the people that you must free yourselves from the yoke and shackle and fetters of those who have no right to govern over you. We are born free. And in Nahjul Balagha, Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi says, Allah sent you free. You are born of your mothers, free. Why should you be enslaved by a certain class of people? Because they wear a particular dress or they have a particular color of the turban. Where is it written? Show me one hadith. A man is judged by his conduct, not by his turban. Not by his sherwani, not by his abba or qaba. A man is judged by his akhlaq. And the time has come when these age-old suspicions must be broken and these but and idols are broken once and for all. Either the leader stays or these rotten things should stay. Two things cannot go together. The idol has got to be broken. That is the beauty and that is the reason why Imam is right. That we have got to be alive. We were released of Aga Khan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. But in place of one Aga Khan, how many Agas do you want to have? I say this, risking everything that I have, and I want to see who answers. Don't try to fool yourselves and the people. These must be broken. They must be demolished. We cannot be ruled. And I say this from Mimbar Rasul. 
we will not be allowed, we won't allow to be ruled by those elements who are spies of their governments and they come here and act in their piety to mislead us. And if they believe that we don't know, we have got documentations ready to prove. These are spies who come with turbans here. Some of them. And if you don't want to believe, do sometimes come to see them with their wives arm in arm in some candlelight dinners without hijab. In England, not outside England. I will take you to places and show you what they do. If you think Mullah Azhar does not know anything except stand more. We were told that Ayatollah al Khoi was killed and martyred. And I will show you documents to prove that the very people who told us that he was martyred, they went to thank Saddam Hussein. Photograph is there for having arranged Fatiha and for having arranged for the treatment of. Ayatullah al khoi We were made to shed tears. Shaheed, Shaheed. They did not know that he was Shaheed. Who are you fooling? You can fool someone sometime. You can't fool everyone every time. My friends, wake up. I am doing my duty. If you don't want me, please tell me I'll leave. Alhamdulillah, I am not one of those who cannot live alone. I am never lonely when I am alone. I've got thousands of things to do. But don't act with me with hypocrisy. Coming to me, Salaamu Alaikum, Mullah Sahib, pray behind you and kiss your hands. And at the back in your train, when you travel, you talk against me and you think I don't hear. Alhamdulillah, the voices are reaching me and I know what you are talking about. Why don't you tell me off? I have come to see the community move. The Sahma Imam salam, is for the community to move. It's not for buying Mercedes Benzes for personal use. I will spend that money for Imam Baras, for mosques, for centers, for marriages. I will give to the community so that it moves because it belongs to the man who is alive. And the times are for movement, not for enjoyment of a particular class. Never, 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 as long as the blood flows in my body. I have that courage to make this community understand that. It's not my money. But try to understand that this is the Imam's money. It will go for this community to remain mobile. Come what may. Come what may. It will not be for buying houses. For your residence. It will not be for having Mercedes or whatever. It will not be for those posh offices. It will be for the people to move. We came to the West. We didn't have anything. This community had to change so many places to, to finally come to this place. We didn't have anything in Peterborough. We have. We didn't have anything in Birmingham. We have. We didn't have anything in Leicester. We have. We didn't have anything in Leeds. Now we have. At all places within England. Now go outside. Go to America. Go to corners. Everywhere we have a center. Everywhere there is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah rising. Everywhere in Muharram there is Ya Hussein, and the voice is heard everywhere. All that has got to come from Male Imam, and this is how we keep the Ummah alive and vibrant and vigorous. That is the meaning of Imam. When you stand up here and say, Assalamu alaikum ya sahib al-zaman and we all 
immediately bow down and keep the hand on our heads, it is not only for ceremony. When Di'b al-Khizai came to Imam Ridha alayhi salam, and he read that famous Marthiya, which is called Marthiya At-Ta'iyya, because every couplet ends with Ta. And it is a part of Arabic literature, وَخُرُوجُ إِمَامٍ لَا مُحَالَةَ خَارِجٌ يَقُومُ عَلَى اسْمِ اللَّهِ بِالْبَرَكَاتِ This was the last one which he said. And the coming of our Imam definitely is going to come out. He's referring to Imam Zaman al Islam. In the days of Imam Rada al Islam, he's referring to Imam Zaman. وَخُرُوجُ إِمَامٍ لَا مُحَالَةَ خَارِجٌ And the Imam who will come, definitely he will come. There is no doubt no two ways about it yaqumu bismillah yaqumu ala bismillah bil barakati he will rise and stand up with the name of god with all his blessings the moment he said yaqumu bismillah imam al al islam stood up faced the qibla bowed down and kept his hand on his head and said allahumma ajjil faraja allahumma ajjil faraja allahumma ajjil faraja and this is the reason why we do it it is the asis and following of Imam Ridha Islam, not our own makeup. The meaning is that yes, I am ready. Yes, I am ready that he may come as soon as possible. Allah may hasten his reappearance. As a token of his expectation that he will soon come. We are supposed to be in intivar, which is called expectation. We are supposed to be mourning sometimes and lamenting the delay in his reappearance. After Asr, day of Juma, any Juma, after Namaz Asr, a mu'min is supposed to be in some grief. Because Imam al Islam has not appeared today. Have you not heard this ziyara which is being read after Namaz Juma? Huh? هَذَا يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ وَهُوَ الْمُتَوَقَّعُ فِيهِ ظُهُورُكِ This is the day, Friday. On this day we expect you to reappear. Today we said it. Every Jum'ah we say, هَذَا يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ وَهُوَ يَوْمُكَ الْمُتَوَقَّعُ فِيهِ ظُهُورُكِ This is the day on which your reappearance is expected. Jum'ah. He did not reappear today, so... Some moments after Namaz Asr, a mu'min has got to be grieved to show that at last we waited, but this Jum'ah was not to be. Why? Because the expectation, intivar, waiting for him, the awaited one, to grieve his non-appearance at the moment, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still not willed to go for Hajj and Umrah on his behalf. That means to do a niyyah, that this time I'm going to Umrah niyabatan an sahib zaman ajrallahu faraja. And to give every sadaqah that we give, for whatever purpose, make a niyyah that I'm giving it on behalf of Imam zaman al-Islam, including Sahim Imam. Those who can't believe me, take Agai Hakim, Tabat Raz, Hashia, marginal notes on Urwat, Al-Urwat al wuthqa He writes there, that the purpose of Sahim Imam in the days of Ghaibah for every mu'min is to give it away as a sadaqah on behalf of Imam Zaman. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. If a young boy from this community comes and says, Mullah, I would like to get higher education and scholarship, I tell him I've got no money. I have no money. If a girl or a boy, orphan, or with no means comes and says, I want to get married, Mullah Sahib, can you help? I say, sorry, no fun. If somebody wants a heater or what do you call it? What do you call it? This. We say it, Patra. Central heating. Huh? I have an old mother, Mullah. My house is devoid of this facility. She will die. I want to fit it in, it will cost me two, three thousand pounds. I have no funds. But I have funds. 
for buying my Mercedes and also supplying its petrol. If I give you an elephant as a gift, will you accept it? If you are in your senses, will you? In Gujarati they say, Hathi kodos levai ni. Suppose I became very kind to you and said, I'm giving you an elephant, the largest animal in the jungle, free of charge, free, free, not, not a single penny. Will you accept it? Huh? Will you? Why not? When I went to Karbala in Mu'alla years ago, I saw one mu'min who came to give a tube light. I did not give, he gave. He gave to Mutawalli Kilid Bardar a tube light, beautiful, written on it, on behalf of Marhumin so and so. I said, please fit this in the haram of Imam Hussain al Islam. The Kilid Bardar told him that pay 200 dinar first for fitting this and at least two months, two years electricity bill. Because you, by fitting this extra bulb, there's going to be extra charge. Pay for it. He said, I'm giving it free to you. He said, you're giving me free a liability. Put it in your own house. Make an ear. Imam Sayyid will accept it. <laughs> you're putting it here. It will, anybody comes here and says, Mullah Sahib, I want to put a fan here. If the Jamaat is sensible enough, it will not accept it. Unless that man foots the bill. Because that extra fan might cost us more. More syndrome, she knows better. But I can tell you this much. That every bulb that is fitted here has got some money to be paid for. The bills, the recurring cost. So if I give you an elephant, you will not accept it, will you? No, because to feed that elephant will cost you a fortune. That is why they say, Hathi lakhno, e mari jai to sawa lakhno. So if you are trying to fool the people by saying that this Mercedes was given to me by my friend, then who is actually feeding the Mercedes? Is he also paying the petrol bill? And he accepted you? You accepted it? As far as I, my simple knowledge about motor cars go, Mercedes must consume quite a hefty amount of petrol, Baba. It is not a Volkswagen. It is called Mercedes, Baba. So when a Mercedes can consume petrol and that can be met with, the bill can be paid, it means one who accepts, has accepted Hathi and is prepared to maintain that elephant. All that goes in the name of Homos. And the people are happy that we have paid, paid to home, to Allah. The community is gradually dying. A young boy or a young girl who could not have been educated because of paucity of funds, a marriage which could not take place, a business which could not be supported, a business which could not be supported, a household which could not be warmed up, Simply because the money that should have come here goes there. Here it would have gone for the poor to keep the society alive. But when will the community open the eyes? When? There isn't anyone to speak. Wallah be my witness, Ya Allah, I have spoken today. You thought I was timid? I was born a brave baby and I shall die a brave man. I cannot be intimidated by these things, by yellow journalism and sensationalism, feeding on dirt and filth. We are living in the time which will lead us to Imam Zaman alayhi salam. wa salam. The expectation of his advent kept our fiqh alive. Produced thousands of mujtahideen. Kept our usul alive. Kept our faith alive. Kept our ulama alive. 
so it should keep our society alive. That when Imam alayhi salam comes, it doesn't be a society of poor people who cannot even move. It has got to be a society which is alive to the needs. It may not be multi multi-millionaire, it may not be materialistic, but it has got to see that both the ends are looked at. Before I end, I was in Bradford some times ago. A young Saidani girl, Saidan, left her parents and went and sought refuge in some home. She was 17. The parents, Sayyid, felt so very much ashamed of this particular step taken by the daughter that they tried to persuade her to come back. She reported them to the welfare officer and social worker. They came and they actually instituted a legal case against the parents. The case was brought before the court, special court. And there stood up the girl and said, I left the house because my father wanted to rape me. This was an accusation. This had never been true. But this is what the Western society has taught us. And the father wept and cried bitterly in the court. She, he asked for a recess. And whoever were the judges, they allowed. During the recess, the judges were very, very learned and impartial, they felt that there was something wrong. As they delved deeper into the case, the girl admitted that she had just made up the case. Her father was totally innocent. When the court reassembled, the girl changed her statement. At that time, father stood up and said, I don't want this girl back in my household now. She can go wherever she likes. I wanted to clear myself of this stigma that I'm not the one who would do what she claims I did. But since she had the audacity of saying this, I don't want her in my household anymore. And he allowed her to go away. Much as she fell on her knees, the father never admitted her back to the house. This is a true story. I am the witness to it. Sayyid family. I related this to you to give you an inkling into what we are heading for. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of us, that such things don't happen to us. That such incidents don't occur in our community. We, have, we are all fathers of daughters and sons, my friends. Who is going to look after the future of this community. And when I say this, I don't mean only Koja Shias Nation. I mean all the Shias Nations. Whichever part you are looking after. You are looking after this part. In Arabic they say, Ma la yudraku kulluhu la yutraku kulluhu. If you can't get the whole cake, it does not mean that you can't eat a part of it. Right? If you cannot eat the whole cake, at least you can eat a part of it. If you can't look after the whole Ummah at a time, you can look after a small portion of it. This is a small part of Ummah, is it not? <coughs> who is going to look after? The leaders who will have the support of the community. Which community? A community which breaks the idols, like Ali ibn Abi Talib -Islam, stands up on the shoulders of the Prophet, breaks one after the other, one after the other. We have got to break those boots and statues, my friends, and be with the leaders, so that my son, my son's generation, and the generation of his generation, their generation, are saved, not only for khushalis and wafat, but for looking after the welfare of Ummah and carrying out the message of the Prophet. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi 
والرسول اذا دعاكم لما يحييكم ده من give you life so when mullah says ah oh, mullah is mullah in alim who has told you to call me an alim have i printed my visiting card to say alim has anyone seen my visiting card with hujjatul islam al muslimin written there i don't do these things i have no such gimmicks Whether one has any ilm or does not have any ilm, and if he has any ilm, how much does he have, is a matter of for ulama to judge, not for juhala to judge. If one has ilm, it is here. Ali ibn Abi Talib used to say, "Ha huna ilmun jamma." Huh? You can rob a man from here. You can't rob him from here. If he has, if he does not have, then it may be a ton size of turban. It makes no difference. Tell me something. So people write. Mullah Sahib says, "Hujjatul Islam." Oh, Baba, if you are going to tell me Hujjatul Islam, well, Muslimin, are you consulting me before that? People write letters to Mullah Azhar writing Hujjatul Islam, well, Muslimin. Do they telephone him first to say that Mullah Sahib, we are writing you a letter with this title? Che khabarist? I have never said this, and I have told so many people, but please don't call me anything. Just my give me the name that my mother gave me, Asghar Ali. That's all. Enough. Don't change that, please. And my mother knew very well when she gave me the name. Although I was the eldest son in the family, yet he called, she called me Asghar, means the youngest and the smallest. I would like to be smallest among you. I have a younger brother who is called Akbar. I am Asghar, small. Let me be there, Asghar. I never say that call me to Islam. But what pains me most is that the very people who are today telling the masses that this Khoja block is not Khoja to Islam, because he hasn't learned from anyone. I have their letters in my file, written in their own hands. Khoja to Islam, Mullah. I have the letters, not typed by secretaries. That tomorrow they may say the secretaries typed it. No, written by their own. At that time, when we were on good rapport and relation, I was Hujjat ul Islam. And today, when I have stood up to say, the call is paid, is paid, a devil, a devil. I am no more Hujjat ul Islam. I hold evidences which will shake the world. When I speak, I speak with all the documentation at my command and with all the confidence. I am trying to save. I am not trying to earn out of it. Those who are nearest to me, they know what is my position today and what is my finance. I will be the last man to do this. What I am accused of, but that the community and the president is sitting here. The crowd may not be as big as it were, but it is a representative crowd. Remember one thing. Please tell me if you don't want me. Tell me on my face. I'll be happy. Don't act like hypocrites, please. And try to understand that if whatever I have done up to today was to 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 awaken you and to break those chains which are in your hands and round your. Next, I am going to break them, and I will allow no nonsense if I am allowed my way. I tell my children here not to speak when Adhan is being given. I tell them to keep quiet when Yasin is being recited. I tell them to remain silent when Hadith Akisa is being read. 
I tell them and request them to keep quiet when namaz jamaat is being read. Please keep quiet. And when these people who are supposed to be our leaders come here, they make this a fish market while adhan is being given. The Prophet said, look at who, don't look at who says, look at what he says. If you don't want to break that chain, if you want to remain enslaved, have your way. I'm not going to be with you. I broke that chain long ago. I believe only in those ulama who are ulama in true sense of it. I don't believe in appearances. And therefore, my friends, this is going to be my message. I will request for a copy of this tape that I have spoken from the Jamaat. And I hope it will be provided to me that I have spoken. And if you don't want me, please tell me. If you want me to be with you, you will have to follow. As I go on breaking the chain, you will have to give me hand and break the chain. It is for your own good and the good of the people to come, your children and your daughters and sons. And that is the message of Imam Zaman. Ajalallahu farajah wa ma'alayna illa al-bala.